are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young. This podcast, as you know, is supported by our friends at Revolutionary Clinics. And as you might imagine, this is a very small cannabis world because our guest, Meredith Mahoney from Lantern, is also involved with Revolutionary Clinics. Meredith, first of all, welcome so much and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me, Jimmy. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me about Lantern. And I, you know what? The first question I want to know is, how did you come up with the name? Well, great question. So um, it kind of goes back to what our brand is, is founded on. And so, um, you know, from a business perspective, business model perspective, we are an e-commerce platform and a cannabis delivery uh, facil- software facilitator. So we sit between the consumer and the dispensary. But if you go a little further, we created a brand that we wanted to feel very good about. We wanted to make sure that it was educational, that it was an important voice in destigmatizing a category that's very, very misunderstood. Um, And so the word lantern really comes from the idea of shining a light on something that's been in darkness for a long time. And so thinking about taking the cannabis community and the cannabis category and bringing it out of the shadows, bringing it into the light. We talk about it very openly. My team talks about it very openly. We talk about um, our experiences. We talk about the way that we purchase it, the education that we need, um, people that we're meeting. And so we really want to be part of helping to normalize this category. Well, welcome aboard. We're all in it together, that's for sure. Uh, and I'm all for those, all, all of those things. And I love the, I love that story. Uh, it, it, let me, the first question I've got to ask is, do you have to go and get a license to be a delivery service? Are you actually putting people on the street? Or are you strictly a software provider that connects the consumer and the dispensary? We are strictly a software and marketing company. We don't need to hold a license, um, and that was by design. You know, we were very excited in Massachusetts about the social equity initiative and making sure that um, you know we're helping to facilitate social equity and economic empowerment applicants um, to really build their businesses with us. Um, we we do, even though we are not a license holder, we are very much on the forefront of compliance. So we act as if we do hold a license. We hold ourselves to that standard with regard to advertising, with regard to any information we're providing on the website, with regard to kind of disclosure and anything related to um, really operating above board in a compliant way. We we like to um, kind of hold ourselves to that standard, but no, we did not have to get a license. For- which is a good thing. I mean, we all know that the it's a highly regulated business with a million inspections, and and it can be um, it can be a daunting endeavor. Let's just say, um, you brought up the social uh, empowerment, economic empowerment, and social equity. Uh, what exactly are you doing for them? If you're not actually hiring delivery drivers, and you're not, right? We're not hiring them for our payroll, like to be on our payroll. Um, but we run a, an incubator program, and that was started about a year ago by our founder, Justin Robinson. Um, he put together a curriculum. He has, um, an, I believe it's eight different sessions. It's hands-on mentorship with people in the industry, people on our team, um, connecting the, the incubator Uh, participants with attorneys, with um, dispensaries, whatever they need. Um, We have an application process. People apply to get into the program. And, um, you know, we're also doing a lot of outreach. So we, in the early days, Justin was going to CCC meetings, making sure that we were connecting with the right folks in the community. Um, And actually, our first class, um, now we have a few folks from that class um, that have gone on to either start their own delivery businesses um, in in other categories to kind of get ready for cannabis delivery. So one of our 
participants is doing a lot of, um, is running a pretty big delivery operation for Drizzly, our sister company on the alcohol side. Mm -hmm. And then um, two others that we've been working with are well on their way with kind of getting their host community agreement, with getting, um, you know, starting to think about how they're going to procure their vehicles, getting set up with uh, legal counsel. Um, so, so we're very hands-on with helping in any way that we can with the business piece of their, um, their journey. Um, but at the end of the day, they will have their own independent businesses. We'll help provide the connections to the dispensary partners that we're working with. And hopefully um, just helping to be part of that network will help them get off the ground. Yeah, there you go. And speaking of getting yeah. off the ground, um, you're basically a new company and in a unprecedented time, uh, yes. we all seem to be, uh, you know, hunkered down in our homes and avoiding people as much as possible. Uh, I opened my first business in 2008, that weekend that the entire world's economy got cut in half, you might remember. <laughs> so being a glutton for punishment, here I am during COVID-19, you know, launching another endeavor, if you will, but uh, that, that's just that's just moi. That's not something you have to worry about. Um, for you, though, were you concerned about this announcement during COVID-19, especially in the state where the governor decided he'd shut down adult use recreation immediately because he didn't see it as essential? I think that it all happened so quickly that we, I didn't have time to really reflect on whether or not it we should launch or whether we should do what we were doing. We were well into it. We, you know, the the founder started working on this business actually a couple of years ago. Um, I've been with the company for four or five months now, but this has been a long time in the works. Um, you know, obviously with the pause on adult use, it through a lot of our dispensary partners. We're working with only one partner right now, Rev Clinics, but we had a number of other conversations going and it, I think it put a, a temporary uh, bit of chaos into their operations. But what I'm finding is that everyone that we were talking to and working with across the country, these, these business owners are very innovative. You have to be in cannabis, you have to be nimble, you have to be patient, you have to be a problem solver. Um, and so this was another um, thing that they had to problem solve, and they've really done a phenomenal job pivoting their businesses. Um, we fortunately, I think, can help be a solution for them because delivery has come to the forefront, um, pick up and delivery. And while we didn't launch in reaction to this pandemic, we were launched prior to the pandemic. Um, it, it really, I think, helped raise the conversation and the priority level for our dispensary partners. There you go. I've worked for startups for a long time. And so if it's not a pandemic, it's something else. There's always things getting thrown at you left and right. It's you lose your investor or you lose a key team member. I don't want to compare that to what's going on in the world because that's my very small point of view versus, you know, a lot of things to deal with at the global level. But um, yeah, we just tried to pivot as quickly as we could and, and be good partners. You know, it's funny. I use the term adapt and improvise a lot yes. because it's a lesson that you learn uh, as an entrepreneur uh, and certainly someone who's trying to start a business. And I also uh, teach at the college level and it's a lesson I try to explain to the kids too. And, you know, sometimes they look at me like, what are you talking about now? And I'm like, well, like, you know, just remember those words, guys, adapt and improvise, okay? It, it definitely will apply to a life lesson, a life situation that you're in at some point, you know? Um, so if I were to, uh, as a medical card patient, and I am, and and by the way, I also go to Rev Clinics because I think they have the best operation. That, that being said, um, it, how would I, do I sign up for delivery on the Rev Clinic site, or do I go directly to Lantern? How does one get involved with this delivery service? So if you were to become a customer of Lanterns, you would actually go to our site directly, which is lanternnow.com, and you would um, shop the site, browse the products. I think one thing that's a differentiator for Lantern is that we have created a user experience that feels very familiar to anyone that's done any 
um, shopping online. So we, we look like, you know, you're shopping for a sweater or you're shopping for paper towels. It's very, very familiar feeling the way that you shop and browse the site. Um, you can shop by strain, you can shop by product type and you select your products, add them to your cart. Um, in a future world, let's say that we cap, you entered your delivery address and let's say that we, um, had, there were two dispensaries that serviced your address. You could either pick which dispensary that you wanted to work with, or you could start by picking a product and then that would kind of marry that order to that dispensary selection. Um, and then once you've completed all of your product selection and check out, um, we don't actually collect your payments or anything online. You just tell us which payment type you want to use. We kick the order over to the dispensary, in this case, Revolutionary Clinics. And then if you are already a patient of theirs, they will pack the order, deliver it to your home. Um, if you're in the 60 minute delivery area, you can get it right now. Um, you can get it very quickly. Otherwise, they'll do a scheduled delivery. If you're a new patient, then today they'll call you, they'll make sure they'll verify your patient number, they'll verify your address. They'll, it's, it's really great. They just wanna make sure that the patients know what to expect, know what to expect when the driver arrives, make sure you have your ID ready, here's your payment type. Um, and so after the order leaves our system, then it goes over to Revolutionary and they do everything from there. Right. And they deliver it to you. And they deliver it to you. Um, Correct. So, so, But hold that thought for a second, because I just want to tell people about this amazing maze pipe by Weegits. That's weedgets.com, W-E-E-D-G-E-T-S.com. It's a very special smoking filtration system that cools the draw on the flower that you ignite from 1300 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to 80 into your lungs. To find out more, check out Weegits.com. And if you decide to take it on, please put in Weed Talk 2020 and get yourself a discount. So anyway, what I was saying was this. How, how are people gonna find out about the Lantern service? So one thing is doing great podcasts. Um, <laughs> we are doing a lot of press right now. We are looking to really communicate with um, our dispensary's current customer base. Um, Rev's been great getting the word out for us. Um, in the future, when we get a kind of get back to normal in the world, you'll see a lot of um, advertising out there for Lantern, a lot of um, out of home advertising. We're looking to do partnerships. We're working with the patient community, um, the, the, the physician community. Um, so we're really just looking to get the word out there. And, and I think this is an, a great service for patients, um, those that really can't leave their homes and also those that just don't want to right now. So hopefully uh, we can really get the word out there. Yeah, and, and rumor has it, I mean, as I follow along the various news, um, adult use recreational delivery is going to be loosened and launched. Uh, it sounds like it is in the next hmm, time. Let's say before the end of the year, because as you know, the whole world has been put on hold right now because yes. of COVID-19. Um, I'm guessing that that is a key part of your uh, future business model too, is working with a lot of the recreational dispensaries, yes? Yes, so we will be um, engaged in recreational delivery. Um, we, again, won't be doing the deliveries ourselves, but we'll be working with adult use dispensaries and pr uh, providing that service there as well. Can you, can you explain your model? I mean, if you're not collecting the money, you're serving as kind of a service provider for the end user. Um, with, how, are you making a, a commission on this? Exactly. If I was an investor in your company, how do, how do I make money on this? I had to ask the question. Yeah, of course. Uh, we charge a flat fee per order and the dispensary pays that. So as a gotcha. customer or a patient, you don't pay any additional fees at all. You pay the same delivery fee as if you order directly from the dispensary. There's no additional fees, you pay the same taxes, obviously. Um, and so where we think our value comes in is in a couple of ways. We are, um, as a team, um, a group of e-commerce veterans. We know how to build a customer experience that's incredibly easy to shop, that gives you all of the product information you 
thought you needed as well as information you didn't know you needed. Um, we have a discovery tool on site. So if you don't, if you're new to the category and you don't really know what, how, how do I even shop for this product? We have a step-by-step -step process that can take you to the product that best matches uh, the things you told us that you want. Um, and then in terms of um, delivery and logistics expertise, we're, you know, we're built off the same technology that Drizzly has been building for the last eight years. Um, Drizzly is the largest and most successful alcohol delivery e-commerce platform in North America. So we almost, you know, we have a eight year start on the absolute best logistics to bring regulated product to consumers quickly, cleanly, legally, legally compliant, um, a great customer experience. And then the last piece is that we are also marketers. And so we really know how to reach the consumer. That's hard. You know, I think about all of the things that dispensaries have to do and, and these operators, they have to grow the product. They have to be experts at growing the product. They have to produce the product. They have to manufacture it. They have to get it from point A to point B in terms of wholesale. They have to be, uh, you know, run retail operations. They have to hire staff. And so that last piece around e-com that's and delivery, that's all we do. That's all we do. And so we don't have to, we don't have to be experts at the full supply chain. And I think when I think about everything these operators have to think about and do well, if we can provide an excellent service that's incremental to their business, brings them new customers, and, and allows them a diff, another way of servicing their customer, that's, that's a great solution for them. And, and I'm guessing the scalability of this is endless because um, even though we're in Massachusetts, an adult use recreational legal state, um, still only one of 12 around the country. And are we looking toward north of the border there up in Canada? <laughs> oh, Canada, where is uh, the whole country's legal? Uh, I would guess that's a pretty good expansion place for you to look into. It's not on the immediate roadmap anywhere in my line of sight right now. I, will, I won't say never, but we're, we're focused on the U.S. right now. There you go. And, yeah. and it is still a struggle in the United States. You brought up the stigma right off the bat. Um, Any time that you have the word cannabis in any kind of a news release or even in casual conversation with people that maybe are not enlightened to what's going on in this business, um, we all face this. Um, is this, I, I got a question for you. Where are you doing your banking? Because even though you're not <laughs> touching the product, you're getting money from the cannabis community. So how does that work? Well, again, we're not a license holder, so we're not kind of subject to the same restrictions and banking challenges that, uh, you know, our, our dispensary and operator partners are delivery partners in the future. Um, you know, there are banks that are more cannabis friendly than others. And so we were able to find a really great reputable bank that would work with us. Um, you know, it's, it is legal what we're doing. So without a license, um, so it wasn't easy, but we found one that we feel really good about. And I don't want to know, but I'm guessing there are service fees involved um, because Lord knows I try to do it. <laughs> Nothing's <myself>. free. <laughs> and nothing is free in this world. And luckily, the credit union community is welcoming uh, the cannabis community, and they have been extremely uh, helpful with me as well. So, uh, Meredith Mahoney, I think you've got a very interesting niche product. Uh, I think you're in good hands with the Drizzly folks because I've been pretty familiar with what they've been doing over the last few years. And I wish you nothing but the best. I hope there's a way for us to work together in some capacity because when it comes to spreading the word, someone with a loud voice and knows how to project it can be very helpful. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do. I hope so as well. And I, I really do appreciate you giving me the chance to talk about Lantern. We're we're extremely excited about it and think it's going to be a great addition to the industry. Well, best of luck, Meredith Mahoney and Lantern. And you can find them online at Lantern. Lanternnow.com. That's right. See, I, that was right. It was a well-placed <laughs> well setup for you and you nailed it, Meredith. Good Thank job. you. <laughs> All right. That's Meredith Mahoney from lanternnow.com. Until the next time, I'm the host of In the Weeds, Jimmy Young. Thanks for watching. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. 
We Talk Now, We Talk News, and In the Weeds are all available on most major podcast distributors like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and our friends at clnsmedia.com and our flagship, cannabis.net. So subscribe, share, and like our videos on all the social media networks out there, including LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, The Weed Tube, and YouTube. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area. Now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. We are Pro Cannabis Media.